Increasing students' intrinsic motivation is something a teacher must always bear in mind while developing classroom activities. The development of tinkering-based and making-based activities allows students to become increasingly more engaged, as their knowledge is built alongside their creation. Questioning and errors are to be expected. If students feel safe to ask and to fail, understanding is easily achieved. STEAM activities are also collaborative activities, as no single person holds all the knowledge. Whether students are collaborating with their peers or with the teacher, sharing of information, discussion, questioning and experimentation should be encouraged. Tinkering and making are fundamental because they allow students to experience hands-on learning, a cornerstone of knowledge building. Developing learning activities where students can interact with materials, manipulate variables and have an active role in the learning process allows for a better understanding of the inner workings of things, narrowing the distance between school and reality. In this activity, we present a way to develop students' motivation and to allow for discrete learning. Students become makers, tinkers and hackers, while teachers occupy non-traditional roles, providing guidelines, encouraging discussion and partnering with students to find errors and work on solving them. Students will have to create a game that is based on conductivity, building its components and coding its algorithms. It is important for students to understand what needs to happen in their game, organize it step by step, plan it, discuss it, change it, and then code it. By using non-expensive materials and low-cost circuit boards, students can create a game that tests their knowledge from various fields, from electronics to the human body, which is the main goal of this example. This activity should start by having the group talk about the subject she one prefers or still has doubts. This should be followed by some discussion about whether students like the idea of learning through gaming and why do they think it's beneficial or not. Whatever their age group, students must be enlightened on the reasoning behind their classroom activities, so to help them feel part of the process. Students should also be encouraged to choose the materials with which they'll build the apparatus that holds the game, which is a great opportunity to talk about reusable materials. Besides the mandatory equipment, such as the microbit, cables and connectors, there is an array of equipment required for the build. They should discuss how to get the best out of each material and how to best utilize them in an environmentally friendly way. In order to develop this activity, students will need to create an anatomical model. In this example, we are going to use computer software to create an exercise with an image in three questions. But pupils are free to build 3D models out of various materials, allowing them to design activities from different subjects, which will be shared among their schoolmates, makes learning a cooperative task and transforms the classroom into a collaborative space. By working with subjects they are comfortable with, they become motivated, while also developing learning materials for peers who may be struggling with those subjects. By allowing themselves to work on subjects which they, they don't yet master, they discreetly connect with knowledge, for it becomes a part of their tinkering and making project. So let's begin! The first thing that you'll need is to build the anatomical model, which can be easily made with low-cost materials, such as modeling clay or papier-mâché. Please check the lesson plan, building a conductivity-based game with, using microbit, to see how to build the anatomical model. In the beginning, three easily identifiable spots are going to be placed in the model of the human body, and they will eventually display visually if the correct answer was given for each of the three questions asked during the game. Next, we will use a paper clip in order to create a connection spot. Bend its end so that there are two rods, rods pointing in the opposite directions. One rod should be pointing out of the model, while the other one should come out of its back, into the game box. During the building process, they'll have to handle different inputs, namely, what happens when there is energy running through each pin. In their code, this is handled by an event block, which will register the answer given. The software must randomly prompt a question to be answered, showing the corresponding number on the LED screen. After touching the pin with the ground wire, therefore running energy through the pin, the output shown on the screen must reflect whether the player's answer was correct or not. This activity can be expanded easily, mostly by the student's creativity. Should the light flash green when you answer correctly? Should the power saving switch be installed to save battery life? Should the timer be programmed in, making the player think quickly? There are no boundaries. Feel free to suggest this and more to older students. As a first step in order to create a game box, students should choose the setup that suits them the best. 
Using cardboard or plastic, it is necessary to create a box that allows for the question cards to be removed and replaced by another. This requires creative thinking and ingenuity. In our example, we use the remaining plastic from the box to create a mechanism that allows the exercise card to be replaced. Following, once the making phase is finished, pupils should be allowed to share their creations with their colleagues. Experimentation, debugging and fun are key components of this stage. Afterwards, a discussion about the whole process should take place. Students can reflect on the process and share both opinions and suggestions. Making and tinkering motivates and engages students. Research becomes essential for their success, as they understand what the knowledge, that the knowledge they are gathering has a real-life application. It also creates an environment that encourages sharing, collaboration and removes the error's negative connotations. It teaches students that everything is part of the process. We hope you found this activity interesting and that it motivates you to try out tinkering and making in your classroom. If you need more inspiration, have a look at the lesson plans below. Choose one of them with your students and register the activity in the Code Week map.